one of the things, the first thing you touched on was pharmacogenomics and, uh, and, and testing there. And that's one of those things that, you know, um, and the, uh, the podcast the other, the other week with, um, with Brad White, we were kind of talking about that a little bit and how, um, you know, medicine is still largely one size fits all and, and kind of dispensed like, um, you know, just kind of off the shelf when we have such a more tailored experience with so many other things in society and, and, you know, restaurants and, 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 uh, clothes. And I mean, you name it, the consumer experience is extremely personal and yet medicine is still very off the rack largely. So, you know, how do you, how do you see that changing? How do you see, you know, being able to use the data about your patients to tailor their experience? You know, is there a realistic future in that an in independent pharmacy? I think so. When a few years ago, um, are you familiar with ACT teams, assertive community treatment? Is that a term that's familiar to you? I don't you? think so, no. So um, patients with SPMI, which stands for severe and persistent mental health illnesses, um, which again, during this pandemic, um, it's been a tragedy for patients that have SPMI. Uh, but patients with mental health illnesses often don't live as long as the general population. In fact, I, I can't tell you the exact number of years, but recently it was 27 years shorter than wow. a typical. Yeah, it's, it's, it's terrible. And it's very difficult for patients with mental health illnesses to get the services they need, uh, first of all, because there's a shortage of providers, but secondly, they're a little bit difficult, more difficult to reach and to treat. So assertive community treatment teams, and this isn't just, um, this isn't only in Minnesota, other states have these teams as well, are designed to have a multidisciplinary team approach based on keeping the patients in their homes rather than having their mental health illness escalate out of control into a crisis unit. And there's different levels of crisis units, but the ACT team in particular is a home-based model. So a few years ago, pharmacies were not included on the ACT team. And one of the psychiatrists that was involved thought that wasn't, that wasn't a good idea. So they reached out to our pharmacy and asked us if we would embed a pharmacist on the team and basically change change the focus of how they delivered the care. So usually with medication th therapy management services or disease state management services, a pharmacist is kind of off on the side doing the, the services, and then they'll send a report to the doctor. With the way that they had it designed, the pharmacist was the first point of contact for the patient, and they performed the MTM session to which the whole care plan was built around. So instead of adding MTM services to an already developed care plan, the MTM services becomes the primary care plan. And we did that for a year as a, a study through a residency. And then we, we um, looked at the results of that study. And it turned out that our pharmacist was able to positively impact basically everybody that she did an MTM session, oh, wow. all the patients. And they were able to take that across the nation to some of the conferences for mental health, mental health providers. And from that, it just became very clear to me that looking at pharmacogenomic testing, because in psychiatry, pharmacogenomic testing is one of the big tools that we would have to help treat these patients, because not everybody reacts the same way to all different medications. Sure. So that's how we kind of, some of the things that I see in the future 
incorporate weaving things like pharmacogenomic testing, biometric screening. That's where we started doing the diabetes um, prevention because a lot of the medications that we use to treat schizophrenia cause weight gain and um, high hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and high blood sugar. So weaving different point of care testing services and different tools that we have available into that whole plan is something that I think community pharmacy and independent pharmacy, it they're poised to succeed. No, it's, it's interesting because it kind of takes it all full circle because that's where MTM and, and a lot of those things came from is that patients would have one one ailment and and they get medications and they experiment and you know maybe going to a psychologist or or somebody over here with this medication and then now they have weight gain or they have these other side effects that they're maybe addressing that medication side effects with another prescriber uh, their general physician or, you know, so so not seeing that correlation directly is where pharmacists kind of got involved with a lot of the MTM model to begin with. So it just kind of makes sense to have that front loaded where the pharmacist is involved in those decisions and, and that kind of therapy regiment from, from square one. If you look at like transitions of care, that's usually where we're seeing some of the failures in our our treatment plans and i think one of the reasons why that resident was able to succeed so just unbelievably succeed beyond what i had imagined was because she was able to see those transitions and catch those gaps or prevent those gaps before they even happened because a lot of patients that were on the ACT team didn't have access to a primary care provider. And that's, again, where we're talking about weaving. We can talk about what is primary care in Minnesota and who can provide those services. Had she had the ability to provide those services, then she would have even been more successful because she wouldn't have had to rely on referral services. But it worked. Thanks for listening to this clip from Beyond the Scripts presented by the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please support our channel by liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell so that you'll be notified anytime we post new content. To stay up to date with all of the latest independent pharmacy news and content, follow PioneerRx on your preferred social media platform.